Hi, today I would like to talk to you about fabric postcards. Fabric postcards are a delightful thing to gift and receive and textile artists, quilters and quilt artists um, love to get them. So does everybody else. So if you want to make a small quick project, here's how to make a textile postcard. Okay, the textile postcard, the most important thing about the textile postcard is, believe it or not, the stiffness. Now it needs to be solid enough that it doesn't flop and bend on that sort of thing. That way it will go through the post and your postie will love you and the gift recipient will love you as well. So here's about what makes it thick. Bag wadding or a stiff pelham and there are various, various um, products out there. One of them is quite a bit thicker than the other. Normal wadding is too soft. So if you're going to use a normal wadding, then make sure you use a stiffener or a piece of paper in it to stiffen it up. And here's another one, see, it's quite stiff. Flexible, stitchable, perfect for postcards. Now sizes, there are various sizes and it doesn't matter what size you do as long as you all do the same. I've been in two recent swaps and one of them was a six by four postcard that's six by four that one lovely ones by Kate Louise in Western Australia then there is also the five by seven it's by Sue Duffy or this one is six by eight now um, usually they are in horizontal format because of the address on the back but there's the three different sizes and you can see so um, six by four inch five by seven inch and six by eight inch. Okay. Now, what to do on the back? On the back of your postcard, it depends how you're sending them. Now, if you're going to send them in an ordinary envelope through the post, it doesn't really matter. Totally up to you what you put on the back. If you are sending it through the mail, then what a really good thing to do is um, buy, you can send it directly like that if you like, but the machines might make it dirty and that's, that's a bit of a shame. So if you buy one of these bags, cellophane bags, put it in there. I put it in halfway. I take it to the post office. I get them to put a real stamp on it and a postmark. And then I put it in the bag, seal it up and then hand it to them. Okay, so the stamps on it, it's postmarked. Don't put the stamps on the outside and they can't postmark the outside because the, the ink will just slide off. So get it done before you put it in the bag and then hand it to them and that'll, that'll arrive to your client or to your, your receiver um, in style and it, they'll love it. And the posties will love it on the way. They love to see them. They'll have a look and think how clever everybody is. Now, on the back, as I said, if you're going to send it through the mail, then you need to have your address. Traditionally, your address is always on the right-hand side. Left-hand side is for your message. The right-hand side is for the receiver. And somewhere on there, you should always put your return address. Quite often that's written just up the middle there or along the bottom. Okay. You can... If you're sending it, not sending it through the post, you're sending it through an envelope, you can just write your message straight on the back of a piece of white fabric. This lady has just put straight fabric on the back of hers. This lady has painted the back and made it look like a postcard, but it actually came in an envelope. Um, you can print out a paper backing. There are great images on the net. Um, search them up. Some of them are free, some of them you pay for, um, but they look fun. Print it out either onto fabric or onto paper and stuck on the back of your card. And if I'm doing paper, I actually just stitched up the back here so that it would hold as well as stitching around the outside. Now, this lady made it double sided, so she was able to give me double the fun. This lady just used a, um, an interfacing on the back of hers. This lady's just written a, written a note on her fabric, written straight on the fabric. This lady has stitched all the way through the layers. And this lady who sent it to me in an envelope printed 
a stamp with a postmark and printed a letter and printed my address, even though she put it in an envelope. So it's come to me all the way from England and it feels like a real postcard, even though it was in an envelope. Now, um, so we've got the three elements of a postcard. You've got your front. You have got your wadding, nice stiff wadding. And then you have your fabric on the back or your printed postcard image. Okay, so there's, so there's your three layers there. Okay. Fabric, wadding, backing. Now generally you put the front and the wadding and you do your stitching and your embellishing and then you put the backing on thereafter. Okay. And then you'll sew around the edge and I'll show you some edge techniques as we go. So if I go through some of the swaps that I've had, I've had some great ones. This lady here um, has done some discharge. She's written on with acrylic paints and she's also done some um, applique. And that is um, Chrissy from the UK. And this is Stephanie from the UK who has painted her background and stitched and she is Stephanie Crawford is our workshop in a box tutor for August we're learning how to paint our own images this lady has done this is Shoshi Shoshi has done some marbling and printed fabric with that this lady is Stephanie and Stephanie is lives in Germany and she is well known for her surface design techniques this is um Tyvek with layers stitched and burnt back. This lady is knows I love blue and white, and she does cyanotype. And I'm very lucky because Alison has made it a double sided postcard. She just put a little label down the bottom. And this lady has sent this to me in an envelope, but she has printed the back with uh, painted the back and um, so it feels like a terrific postcard. This lady has just, again, written on the back, the one I showed you with paper, and this lady has also written on the back, and she's written on a, she's drawn her own postcard, and she has written on some interfacing on the back. Now, let's show you some of the fabulous designs I've had through the post. This was a Workshop in a Box member. This is Carol, and she used quite a few of our techniques from Workshop in a Box. And she has um, stitched and hand-stitched, and she has used gum nuts, and she has hand-stitched her edge. She has used shiva sticks and embellished. It's having trouble focusing on that for you. That is Carol Leach from New South Wales. And this is a beautiful one by Sally Ann Westcott in Tasmania. And she has done applique and she's a little mitre corner and she's done some printing and stitching. This lady has done a, a, a scene with applique, confetti. She's used some gossamer in there and she has also used some yarns to great effect. Um, as if it was grass. That was Sue Duffy. She's from Queensland. And this is one of mine. I have, we were in so many Zooms over COVID. Uh, this is a drawing of our Zoom members. And I did that with acrylic ink. I only stitched um, in between the Zoom marks, not on the faces. This is Gillian Travis from the UK, an intrepid traveler. And she makes um, many, many art quilts from her travel so I'm quite lucky to have this one so Gillian has printed her background done applique she's also used foil and stitching now if we talk about finishing the edges most people just zigzag around the edge it's a loose zigzag with a colored thread zigzag this lady has done a satin stitch around the edge this lady has done some hand stitching around the edge. This lady has used her backing fabric and pulled that around to the front. We've got a wide satin stitch. 
And this lady has used an open side and just stitched around the edge. So anything goes, anything goes. All right, now what about some inspiration? Here's some tips from me. If you've been in a workshop or you've been playing and you've got some samples, cut them up and reinvent them and make them work for you. This was a sample I did where I was playing with layered fabrics and gossamer and shears and uh, I stitched it and I've burnt it back. This is a lady that sent this to me in a card and I took it out of the card because it was hiding some of the beautiful work. This is felt with a layer of sheer organza over the top and she has done some embellishing on that and some machine embroidery. This one is a fabric collage, stitched fabric collage. This one is a stencil that's actually an iron-on or a rub-on stencil. This one is still in a card, but it was a leaf print with hand stitching. This one has no stitching whatsoever apart from to keep some sequins on. And it is tea bags and um, all sorts of threads are embedded in there. It's not showing you very well, is it? Let's see if the camera can catch up. There we go. And if you are doing other, um, if you're trying things out, here's me trying out some bleach discharge um, and a bleach pen that I had and some discharge. There's some foiling, some foiling I had and some stitching. So I could cut that up and do something else with it and reinvent it. Now, we've also, if, if you've got workshop samples, so I did some playing painting in a workshop um, they're a bit of fun even if I don't send somebody a mushroom if I cut bits out they become great backgrounds for other things so you can do all sorts of things on your postcard just remember they must be thin enough to go through excuse me they must be thin enough to go through a, a letter swap here in Australia we need uh, it to be five mil. This one's quite a bit big. So this is why um, four by six is a good size and we'll go as a small letter. These ones are six by eight. So they go as a bigger size letter. If you put embellishments on them, tags, buttons, you must put them through an envelope. You cannot put them straight, straight through or the machines will just rip them to shreds and they'll get stuck in the machine and they may not get to the end journey. So again, one of the most important things is bag wadding or a uh, stiff interfacing, not, um, not something like normal batting or wadding because it's too soft, okay? Something nice and stiff. Three layers, front wadding, stitch, put your backing on, stitch around the outside, send it however you want and swap and share your ideas. And don't forget, I'd love to see them. So if you tag two sew textiles, use the hashtag number two sew or hashtag two sew textiles and let me know. Let me know how you go. Have fun with your, your postcard journeys. See you.